Now then, we just um, we've got an interview with Ray. Hello, Ray. How are you all right, Louis? Hello. Hello. Um, and Ray uh, was the. You don't. I'm going to say this, Ray. He set up the Lancaster Filmmakers Co-op. He goes, oh, well, it wasn't just me. And I said, well, it was his idea, right. and he was a co-founder. Oh, so it's, it's all down to you, really. <laughs> <laughs> Too modest. Um, so it's, it's really, really interesting. And if people do want to get in to filming, mm. this is a brilliant, brilliant group to get involved with. Mm. So listen to what he's saying and... Uh, and do it, yeah. even if you've got no experience or no equipment or nothing. If you want to do it, if that is what you dream or you want to do, then join this group and listen to what Ray has to say now. So, here we go. Yes, I'm here today, this afternoon, with Ray. Hi, Ray. Hello. <laughs> and uh, Ray is from the Lancaster Filmmakers Co-op. So... You set the group up, didn't you, Ray, in the first place? You'll, yeah. say, you'll say that you won't, but you did. did you? I, I set it up with other people, but it was my idea. It was your idea? Back in 2009. 2009, right. Um, yeah. So the reason I did that was that um, I just thought there was no reason. We were, we were entering a, a period when people could make films very cheaply. I thought the, the equipment was good enough. Um, people could get edit suites and stuff. There was no reason that people... That wanted to make films couldn't make them um but the thing that was stopping them everybody was you have to go around trying to get money um and i just thought that you we didn't you didn't need to do that actually you just needed a bunch of like-minded people that just wanted to make films and didn't really didn't want to look at it from the point of view of can this make money can this sell can we you know can we think about this territory or whatever you know it was none of that it's just about people wanting to make films and i figured that in Lancaster, which is quite a sort of arty kind of city, there's people with equipment, there's people with skill, and they could help each other out. They all want to get a film made, and they're all in the same boat, but they can just ask, you could ask each other. Because, of course, you need you need different things, don't you? Not everyone's got the same yeah, equipment I mean, or the same skills. Yeah, and I mean, you know, and filmmaking, unlike... I suppose it's more like music than painting or something. You know, painting, you stand there with a brush and paint. Music, you've got to have a bass player, a guitarist, a drummer, and you've all got to have a different skill, and filmmaking is more like that. Um, but also, people want to learn these skills, you know, and they don't, and it's hard, because there's not really any easy way to do it. Not not well, anyway. I mean, you, you, know, you can go and work on an actual film set, but they're quite ruthless places I think if you don't really quite know what you're doing there isn't there isn't the sort of scope for insecurity and sort of you know asking questions and that sort of thing people are not always that helpful and I mean and very much kind of the ethos of the film co-op is anyone that wants to be involved even if they know nothing about filmmaking um comes along and asks questions and the people making the films want need these people to be helping out, so they they can't sort of they can't be rude to them, even if they want to be. And I hope they don't want to be, but they can't be rude to them. They have to they have to be helpful. They have to be polite. They have to say, "I've got no one to do sound on my film, but you you're willing to help, so I'll train you how to do it." Um, that kind of thing. So that so it's very much the sort of thing of anybody can come along. It doesn't matter what they know and what they don't know, uh, as long as they're keen and eager and willing to willing to put in some work, they can come along and they can. So they could come and back and learn. They could come and learn yeah. how to do sound. And actually, yes. Camera and lighting. Yeah, and one of the things that we've been talking about, actually, um, is actually making some tutorial videos um, to put on the Facebook group. Uh, just, just to sort of kind of be tutorials for people to sort of... So things like how to light a set or how to light a face or how to film a scene, how to edit a scene or something like that. Um, just to sort of, just so people can watch them and hopefully get something from them, but they will get a lot more if they actually come along to our meetings, which are on the third Friday of every month at the Story in, in Westbourne Road. Mm. Um, what time? What time? I think they start at half seven. 
It's not. It's not Westbourne Road. Is it not? It's not no. <laughs> Where is it? It's what? um. Is it Meeting House Lane? Meeting House Lane. The story. Oh. Yeah. The story. The story. Meeting the story House Institute. Lane. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. near the train station. Yes. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, it turns into Westbourne Road. So that's where we. That's where we meet. Seven thirty. Fr- third Friday of every month. We also have a Facebook group, which is Lancaster Filmmakers Co-op. Um, and we have a website which is www.lancasterfilmmakers.co.uk with no hyphens or apostrophes or commas and there is a link there to a YouTube channel there is also a link to a Facebook group which is actually not our current Facebook group um, but that will probably change soon um, but that's a good, you can go to that go to, the, go to the old Facebook group and then there's a link to the new one Yes. So you can do it that way, but hopefully that will change and we'll just go straight to the new one at some point. Right. Um, so the other the other thing that I would... Sorry, can I... <clears throat> so the other thing I think is important is um, that when you make a film for no money, actually relatively easy to get people to do the camera or people to do the editing because people want to do those jobs. They want to get showreels together. But equally important is you need somebody who's going to just be there to make cups of tea for people um, and sandwiches for people and that sort of thing. And just to kind of and just move bits of kit around. And of course, these are not the jobs people people don't want to go into the film industry to to make tea. Um, But they're really important. I mean, they are as important to getting the film made as having a good cameraman or having a good editor. Um, And so that's the other thing. I mean, if people people want to just be on a film set. You can get you can get the feel of it, if you, you know, if you're not actually going in, because obviously people who've got no experience, they, they, they can't just go in and do things. So if they, if they, if they are helping yeah. making tea and sandwiches in Absolutely. the beginning, you'll get the feel of it, of it don't yeah. you? Yeah, and I mean, and the other thing is, I mean, it isn't just the people that don't know. I mean, you know, it's like I've d- just directed a film just after Christmas, um, and one of the guys in the co-op helped me and then he's just made a film um, and I helped out on that and actually what I was basically doing was making tea and coffee and sandwiches and going down the shop and I was basically the runner um, because there wasn't anybody else to do that he had a camera operator he had actors he had you know people doing other jobs and that was the job that needed doing um, so I guess what I'm sort of saying is you can't be precious about stuff you can't be on an ego trip about it either because we're all working for no money. We're all working with limited budgets, very limited budgets usually. Um, and you've just got to kind of make it work. And when it works, it's fantastic. It's really nice when you get a bunch of people just come together um, and they just help each other out. And there's no kind of animosity. There's no kind of ego trips. There's no sort of competition. It's just about sort of, I've made my film. I'm going to help you make your film. And... Actually, what you get out of that is two films. You don't, you don't get, you don't get sort of no films and people going, "I could have made a masterpiece." You get two films. You get two finished films, and that I think is a good thing. That's something that really yeah. kind of means means something. It's meaningful when you can do that. Mm. Another really important thing, another really important point about the film cop is I think it's very much the case that if you put a lot of effort in and actually help as many people as possible. Um, and nobody expects you, you know, when you when you come along, you're not signing up to, to help out every time somebody asks, you know, and you're under no obligation. But if you help people out, then they will help you out. And and, it, and it's kind of self-selecting. You, you, you quickly learn the people that are going to help you. So you help them and the people who don't return the favours. And actually, I don't know, maybe they get people, but I think they find it harder, you know, to, to get people to help out on their films and that sort of thing. And I mean, I mean, the other thing that happens is it does spill over. Some of us are professional filmmakers. And if we need kit or we need crew, you get to know people. You get to know that a certain person owns a type of camera that you might want, so you hire it off them. And I always maintain that if you're getting paid for a job, you do then pay that person you don't you don't the co-op isn't just free labor or free equipment hire you know it is 
if you're getting paid, you pay that person. But if you're not getting paid, then it, then it's a more favour based type of thing. That's how I think of it. But that is between individuals because we're not really the carp itself is not really responsible for anything. It's just a just facilitates people getting together. Really. So last year, the the co-op almost folded. It didn't seem to have a lot of interest in it. Um, so early this year, it got restarted and it got kind of rebooted in its co-op version two, whatever. And um, what we're doing now is a much more structured kind of thing where people turn up and um, we actually kind of go around the group that are there at the, at the meeting and sort of say, what are you working on? And what stage are you at? And, you know, will you want to talk about it next month? And where do you hope you'll be next month? And, and it's not about bullying people into doing it, but it is about kind of very gentle peer pressure. So sort of saying, you know... Guiding people. Guiding people. Just sort of, yeah. just sort of saying that, you know... But also, I mean, just also saying, if you, if you say, oh, I'm, I'm trying to find a location, somebody in that room might say, oh, I've got a location. I know that location that you're looking for. I know what you're looking for and I can help you. That sort of thing. So it's 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 kind of very much about helping, but it is but but right, before it used to just be a kind of a social thing. We'd meet and everything was done all the kind of business side of it was done on Facebook. Whereas now, I think we meet and it is we go around the group and sort of say, "Have you got a script? Have you got actors? And what do you need?" And people talk about it like that from that point of view, and that sort of that seems to be working out. I mean, that's encouraged. I think I think a film has got made since Christmas. Completely from scratch, you know, got written, cast, and filmed. Wow, that's brilliant. Yeah, just I think there was. A, I mean, I don't, I don't know how far into the planning, but I think that we kind of encouraged that and made it happen without necessarily actually doing anything, really, just by just because the guy turned up and talked about it, and he made it happen. Brilliant. Okay. So it's the th is it the th every third Friday? Third Friday? Did I say Friday? Yeah. I did say Friday. Yes, every third Friday. At the story, uh, at seven thirty. Seven thirty. Yes. Brilliant. And then at about nine thirty, we go to the pub. Yeah, right. <laughs> and get drunk, and uh, just it's more. We carry on talking about films, but it's it's more of a social thing. It's less structured. It's yeah. just more of a social. Great. Anyway, thank you very well, much. That's right. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Brilliant. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Very good. That's great. So get yourself down there. Third Friday of the month, 7.30 at the Story Institute on Meeting House Lane. And yeah. if you yeah. if you genuinely want to uh, get involved in film, they're a nice group of people. They're very inclusive. It's not like mm. a lot of you, how you might imagine. You're like, oh, God, you know, mm -hmm. they're too up themselves. They're too egotistical. It's not like that at all. That's good. Nice group of people. I've, I've done stuff with them right. personally. Yeah. And uh, they've been very, very helpful and very, very encouraging. I'd love yeah. to. I'd yeah. love to, but I'd be nervous about that because, you know, as you're saying, you feel like because you don't know anything about it. Well, I'm telling you, they'll help you. Right, okay. They will.